welcome back to another installment of our City of Jackson, Tennessee Women in Leadership series. I'm 2020 Mayor's Youth Council Vice President Jasmine Sinchon. We continue our spotlight on these remarkable women by hearing from the director of Jackson, Tennessee's Recovery Court, Haley Coble. Haley hopes to change lives in this role for our city. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you again for watching. Hello, um, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm gonna be asking you a few questions today. And my first one is, what is it like to be a woman in leadership in your field? Well, for me, as a woman in leadership within the Recovery Court program, um, it's been um, an experience that's really grown me in a lot of ways, professionally and personally. In Recovery Court, we work with individuals in the criminal justice system who have substance use disorders. And so instead of doing jail time for their crimes, they're actually able to receive court supervision and long-term treatment um, and really get the help for, for the reasons that they're coming in and out of the criminal justice system. Um, and so for me as a director, you know, it's, it's my job to make sure that our program is implementing best practices and that we're providing the highest quality of services and treatment for our clients within the community. And um, I think for me, one of the best things about this job is that we get to care for our clients um, and work with them by empathizing with them and encouraging them um, you know, as they work to rebuild their lives and, and as they're kind of getting back on track. And I think one of the hardest things about this job sometimes can be that also by caring for them, we have really strict rules and things that we have to enforce. And so sometimes in a leadership position, our team has to make really hard decisions for our clients that ultimately we know are going to you know, be best for them and are going to affect them um, positively in the long run but at the time it's just still really hard you know if clients aren't doing what they need to be doing and and we have to make some of those tough decisions and so um, for me I just feel like I'm so thankful that our city has a program like this to be able to help um, clients that are in and out of the criminal justice system due to their drug use and criminal behavior and really give them a chance to change and and to work on those things and I'm just thankful that um, the Lord's allowed me the opportunity to have this job and to be in a leadership position position and it would just it's just my prayer that as a woman in leadership in this job that you know I'm able able to that people are able to see something different in me and that um, they're able to to see something different in me and how I live my life and how I do my job and in the way that I treat people. Do you feel that your career has shaped your understanding of the world in any sort of way? I do. Um, working with people in recovery is one of the most rewarding experiences because we get to be with them in the absolute, some of the best times of their life. Um, when they're, you know, first getting a job for the first time in a really long time or getting their driver's licenses or their GED, getting their kids back, their families back, um, even just celebrating a day or a week that they've had clean because for some of them this is the longest that they've had clean in their entire adult lives. And so it's just so rewarding to be able to be a part of that. But also, there are just some really tough days because in this field, you know, it's not always the outcome that you hope and pray for with each client. Even in the past couple of years and as recent as last month, we've had clients that we have lost to drug overdose and to um, suicide and even homicide. And it's so heartbreaking and so devastating. And for me, really just reminds me how precious life is because for our clients, it is life or death a lot of times. You know, if they go back to the lifestyles that they were living and go back to drug use um, or back to gang activity and criminal behavior, you know, for them, it is life or death. And it just reminds me that, that life is so precious and I wanna use every opportunity that I have to make that count in their lives. and. Um, and to be able to invest in them and to, to love them. I also know that for our clients and for people that are struggling, it's so important to raise awareness about addiction and about substance use disorders and mental health issues because we all have family members and know people um, who are struggling or who need some help and need people to come alongside them and to really encourage them um, and reduce that stigma so that they're able to get the treatment that they need. I think it's, it's more important now than ever to really talk about these things and to raise awareness um, for substance use disorders and mental health issues because there are a lot of people struggling who need people to come alongside them and to help them to reduce that stigma and be able to get the treatment that they need. Um, you know, and like I said before, I genuinely believe that the Lord has placed me in this job um, for a reason and I wanna use every day to, to make it count. And my hope is that our clients know that they can change and that they can be changed. And for me personally, I believe that's through a relationship with the Lord and so I just pray for opportunities every day in my life and in my job to be able to share that with people. Um, are there any assumptions of women you would like to change and why? 
Well, I feel like our culture is constantly throwing things at us as women that will tell us what will make us more valuable or more worthy or more successful. And, you know, when I um, hear those things, I have to remember to go back to God's worth and the truth about what he says about me as a woman. And as a woman, I think it's so important for people to realize that you can be strong while still being kind and gentle. And you can be confident while still being humble and teachable. And you can be a leader while still submitting to those in authority that the Lord has placed in your life and so I think that that's really important um, you know for me and a lot of things that I've learned in, in this job and in my life and I know that God created women the way he did for a purpose and for a reason and it's by his good design and so I would just hope that those qualities um, in my role as a woman are used in all aspects of my life to bring glory to him. Um, is there any female figure that inspired you or impacted your life? I know this is like the typical answer, but I would definitely have to say my mom. And when I was thinking uh, thinking about it, you know, it may not be the typical answer for everybody. So I really feel like it's a privilege that I'm able to say that about my mom and that I was raised by someone who loves the Lord and, and who's so godly. She's taught me a lot about what a woman of God looks like. She, she leads well in her job and is a strong woman. She's so patient and kind. She's a loving wife and mother. Um, and so I just had a little girl two months ago. And so for me, I just pray that, you know, one day she's able to say those same things about me, that I was an example for her um, of a woman of faith and that, that I lived my life in a way that impacted her to be a woman of God. What is the message you have to all young women wanting to enter your field? I would just tell any young women wanting to enter this field um, to be true to who God made you to be and to be confident in that. Like God gave all of us um, different skills and different abilities to be used in whatever we do in life. And so I would say even um, as hard as it can be sometimes to, to not compare yourself to people, but to also not do that, like to be able to be confident in who God made you to be and do your job with the utmost integrity. I would also tell them something that someone told me really early on, and that's that, you know, we're not responsible for our clients' failures or their success. One of the things that can be really hard is if a client's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, or if they don't complete the program, you can feel like, you know, could I have done something better? Could I have done a better job? Could I have said something different or helped them in a way that might have helped them complete this program or not make the decisions that they did? Um, and so someone told me, you know, really early on that we're not responsible for that. Like you celebrate with them in their victories and you empathize with them in their struggles but that ultimately it's up to them to use the tools that we have given them to be able to live lives um, after recovery court and during recovery court um, to be able to stay clean and stay sober and make that positive change in their life and that was really freeing for me because you know ultimately it's not up to me or anything that I do and I don't have any control over that like it's ultimately up to each individual for the choices that they make in their life and what they choose to do with it. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to interview today. It was thank a pleasure. You. Thank you.